the NFL on EA Sports, and we'll see who rules the skies in tonight's battle. It's the Atlanta Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles next on Madden NFL 23. The city of Philadelphia is one of rich history and passion, and you can always count on the ladder when you step inside Lincoln Financial Field. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Atlanta Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, everybody, alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. This will be a touchback. Now, for the first time, we get to see this Philadelphia offense run out by their dual-threat quarterback now in his third season, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts got the green light as a starter from the Philly organization and took really good steps as the next in line of mobile quarterbacks in the city, following names like Michael Vick, Donovan McNabb, and Randall Cunningham. He led the team in all quarterbacks in the NFL in rushing, and he took Philadelphia to the postseason while throwing for over 3,000 yards. First play, and Hurts looking to throw it. And this one complete to Smith. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Miles Sanders, first carry of the game. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and that will be third down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. That yeah, was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Hurts sets up to throw it. The Sanders has got it complete. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. The whole idea of the screen pass is to fool the defense in a big way and create a big play. They weren't fooled. Not one <laughs> second, not one bit. How about them figuring it out, diagnosing it, and spilling it for lost yardage? Here's Aaron Sipos out now to punt on fourth down. And back deep, Avery Williams. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. Well, the Falcons now get to stretch their wings on offense here, and at quarterback for them is a former second overall pick who spent four seasons as a starter in Tennessee, Marcus Mariota. Coming out of Oregon as the Heisman Trophy winner, we thought that this guy was headed towards superstardom, and while he didn't quite reach those heights, he did have some flashes along the way. And right now, his athleticism continues to keep him in the league. Still has a good arm, mobile, a great guy to have in the locker room. He can win if given an opportunity. 
Now the rookie fifth round pick. This is Tyler Algier. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. On second down, there's the option going left. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. He'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Here's Mariota. And that is incomplete. That's the first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. On fourth down, Bradley Pinion on to punt for the Falcons. He's covered up quickly. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and ten. So back onto the field. Here come the Eagles for their second drive. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession. See if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great. Because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. They'll go again with Sanders. And a short gain across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you. And sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Throwing his hurts. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's four. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play. And he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it. And he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Now Mariota. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Play action now. Mariota. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And they're going to get this up to midfield. I certainly know that I, for one, would not like to be on the other end of a tackle when this guy's coming at you full speed from his strong safety spot. Boy, that was a nice play. And that is a situation where in a defender's mind, you just have to pick a point on the football field and think to yourself, I'm going to sprint full out and meet him at that point. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, but he had to play diagnosed perfectly there. And the next-gen stats tell the story as he was traveling at better than 19 miles an hour. 
On first and ten, it's Algier. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Mariota now from the 50. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised, as we just saw there. Third and short yardage, Mariota. A complete to Drake London. And he is going to have a Falcons first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Off the play fake, Mariota. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. That's an early scramble to be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish it as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. On second, here's Algier. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So first down, and they'll stick with Algier. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. To throw on second and six, Mariota. Complete to Zacchaeus. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the gun, Mariota. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Algier going straight ahead. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. Mariota. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to the ground. And getting four yards there on his 
zone, but it also brings up fourth down. I'm actually looking at this play with defensive eyes here, partner, because they were still laser focused on him after his earlier exploits on this drive. I think they went back to the well just a little bit too soon. He got across the line of scrimmage, but they certainly weren't giving up much more than that. Koo knocks this one through the post, and the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. And I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback. And they'll begin at the 25. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. Open man is Goddard, the tight end. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Now second quarter action from Philadelphia, and it's the Eagles in possession as they've got a second and eight forthcoming. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Hurts. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Aaron Sipos now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Mariota to throw it. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. Algier now up the middle. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But if the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Mariota's throw taken in by London. And he has another first down as they'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 41-yard line. 15 yards there on the catch and run. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. 
But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Mariota now. Throws. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Here's Hurts to throw. Airing it out deep for Smith. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The offense schemed going five wide, trying to create a chance for the big shot, and they took it. If he comes down with that one, that's a huge offensive swing. But credit the defense with a nice play, knocking that one away. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. They'll set up to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Rocked incompletions on first and second down. It certainly seems like a reflection of what we've seen so far in this game. The defense, quicker to the punch so far. Let's see if they can get something going here on third down. The Eagles on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Now back to throw. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The scramble good for a nice gain of 10 yards, but still fourth down. That looked great when he first took off because, in my mind, there was room to run, and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. Aaron Sipos on to punt as he'll get this one away now. On the return is Williams. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And it will be Falcon football. Atlanta now coming out on the field. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one, and that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. And he'll take this ahead for about four, second down coming up. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. To throw on second and six, Mariota dumps this one off to Algier. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. And the Eagles with a dime look, six DBs on third down. Algier will try to pick it up. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have.
They'll stick with Algier. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, here we go. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Give to Algier from the shotgun. And he stopped immediately there. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good. And he can't find a receiver, and he's put it down. Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, getting the sack. Javon Hargrave's second year in Philadelphia. But the returns, the Eagles were hoping for made his first Pro Bowl with seven and a half sacks and really meshed well with the other pass rushers along the team's front line. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to pump this one away. Taken in at the 22. 13 yards, the tally on the return there. And it will be Eagles football first and 10. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough and run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. From the 36, Hurts. That swung out wide to Sanders. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first and ten, it's Sanders. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. The Eagles and Falcons, you might remember they met in the season opener last year. Jalen Hurts' first week one start, and he made it a good one. 32 to 6. They were all over the Falcons, routing them in Atlanta. The last run got a couple here, second and eight. Back to throw here. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's got a first down as he's going to be taken down. But a very nice pickup there just in front of the two-minute warning. Give him 18 on the play. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10. Down at the 33. They'll drop the throw. He's got his target. That's Zach Pascal. And he's going to get this down near the 25. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a count or two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. To throw again on second down. Hurts over the middle to Smith. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18 yard line. Devontae Smith's workload certainly didn't get any lighter going from being a Heisman Trophy winner at Alabama. 
to his first year with the Philadelphia Eagles. 104 targets as a rookie, and his 916 yards, they were the most for a Philly wideout since 2015. They go to him there for a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. Yeah, he's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. Jalen Hurts finding A.J. Brown. And the Eagles have taken the lead. This is up and good to make it 7-3. So that drive goes eight plays, and it's capped off by an A.J. Brown touchdown. Touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Falcons offense set to go. And looking at this situation, Charles, you got more than a minute. You've got all three timeouts. Probably no need to play this safe. So what you're saying is that we're doing a little bit of a mind meld here, aren't we? Because I'm thinking along the same lines as you. This amount of time, don't be compelled to play it too safe. This is a chance to get points on the board. Press it a little bit. And especially since a touchdown here gets you the lead. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. But so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Third down, here's Algier. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist to the referee, and that means fourth down. Now here's Bradley Pinion now. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. It will be a 39-yard punt, no return, and they will take over first and 10. On first and 10, it's Hurts. And his pass incomplete. Well, certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Throwing his hurts. 
And that's complete to Sanders. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Hurt sets up to throw it. Well, this is Smith with a grab. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. First down, Hurts. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. They'll look to throw again. Quick slant to Brown. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This will be from 49 yards out. The kick by Elliott is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the 1-2 to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. Seconds, all that remain here in this first half as the kick gets away. This one fielded at the five. So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles on top as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Falcons. And they were able to have a little bit of success on the ground. The question will be, will they stick with it? Or will they be throwing more to try and regain this lead? Meanwhile, for the Eagles, you get a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And whatever they've done, it's worked, as they have the lead through two quarters of play. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Sports. 
And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. The Falcons ready to go back to work to start the third quarter. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. 54 yards rushing for him now to this point. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Throwing Mariota. Throwing for his running back and he's got him complete. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now a handoff to Algier, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Really good stop there by the end in this 4-3 defense. And not just pass rushers anymore, are they? Those guys can use their hands, control the point of attack, shed those blockers, and go get those ball carriers. Here's Algier again on second down. They'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On third down, Mariota. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't come out. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. This will be fielded at the... Now a hit and a loose football. So they will set up shot. Excellent field position in the red zone at the 19-yard line. It's been a struggle all game for them on offense. This was a chance to maybe provide a little bit of a spark with a punt return. Unfortunately, <laughs> that spark got doused. Yeah, and you call special teams the third phase, but you see here it can be the first phase sometimes. That is so true, right? It can, it can ignite it one way or the other, and boy, that didn't help them at all. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Working out of the gun, Mariota. Looking there for Pitts, but intercepted. Picked off by Kaiser Wright. And the Eagles are going to take possession of the football. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone set. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. The quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. That's tremendous field position that they were given following the turnover, but they've still got work to do to get the field goal range, and the coverage we're seeing isn't going to make it easy. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll look to throw. 
Edwards fumbles it, and the Falcons grab it. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. So turnovers, Charles, you figure will be key in the second half, and that's a big giveaway there. Yeah, and as you and I both know, coaches are always preaching ball security, and none more often than right here in the second half of a tight football game. Now you've got to believe what the coaches are saying and take care of that football. First and 10 now for the Falcons, and Mariota right at the 30. Mariota now after the fumble recovery. Kaderil Hodge has it complete. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. On the give, Algier headed left. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. 65 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. Algier was massively productive with BYU's lead back in his last two seasons. Really sees control of the job the second half of 2022. One of college football's leaders in yards and touchdowns in his final season as a Cougar. Atlanta, they're obviously hoping that that production will translate to Sundays in whatever role they use him. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Algier with another carry. And across the midfield, stripe into Eagle territory. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field where his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. from just shy of midfield. Mariota, that's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Mariota. They'll get this into the hands of Hodge. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. On the give, it's Algier. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. That's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It's only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second and seven, Mariota over the middle, caught by London. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, Mariota. And that is incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Yeah. 
Second and 10 now. Third quarter action from Philadelphia, PA. Now a carry for Algier headed right. And they'll get him down right around the 16. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eighth coming up. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. To throw is Mariota. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hurry. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. Like any team plan, they're looking for touchdowns to try and help their cause. But in this case, he does get them a little closer at least if they think a field goal turns out to be the better call here. On fourth down, Mariota is off, and on comes Atlanta's young way, Koo. Koo knocks this one through the post, and that'll bring him back within four. Well, certainly happy they were able to force the fumble, Charles, but wish they would have gotten in the end zone, only getting three points there and still facing this second-half deficit. And they also will understand it's going to be a whole lot tougher to force another turnover the rest of the game because that offense, they're going to be all about ball security from here on out. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. Now this game it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Here's Hurts to throw. Just a gain of a couple there. And it's second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Second down, back to Sanders. And he'll take this to the 32, a gain of about three. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Hurts. And he's got his man. It's the tight end Goddard. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. So here's a first and ten at the 38. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. He delivers another to Goddard complete. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Final minute now of the third quarter. Now an option play on second down. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. A solid gain of seven yards that time on the keeper and a first down. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 47. 
Hurts a handoff to Sanders. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. A gain of three, second down. they come to the line they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter we'll return with more after this you're watching the nfl on ea sports second down back to sanders and he'll get it down on the play to the 37 seven yards there and a first down this offensive line they're really starting to establish themselves take over this game and before the series began i know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle guys we gotta get no less than a three and out let's get off the field instead they can't find any traction towards doing that right now they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it They run with Sanders off the option. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully in this game. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. He finds his tight end, Goddard. That's complete. He's brought down at the 34, calling a gain of four. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on catching the ball and not much run after the catch. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. That swung out wide to Sanders. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short Outside. of the first. Outside. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call. Mark off the five and keep it moving. And the penalty, a big assist to this offense. Now it's third and three. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And they're knocking on the door now. There's a good run there. Going to take this to about the 10-yard line. Hold it. Offense. on third down three for seven so far in this game this will be third and six and he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole the decision to tuck and run gets him three but that's not enough now it's fourth i certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit and he gets a small gain on the play. So a big, big kick coming now for Jake Elliott. This will get the lead up to seven. The kick by Elliott is good. And that will open the lead up to a touchdown now at 13-6. to six. From a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, we kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet. Okay, being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. 
And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating the defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Algier with it. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. From the gun, Mariota. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That's taken on the 25. Call it a 48-yard punt, give him nine, though, on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. And he's got his man in stride, complete. That'll give him eight that time. And they'll be left with second and a couple. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Looking to throw again on second down. Hurts. And he is going to lose yardage here. They'll wind up losing three here on the play, and it brings up third and five now. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And he'll have it past midfield, almost to the 40, before being taken down. Hurts dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. Now that's a killer, because you think you get it absolutely covered. And then he hot puts it out of there and picks up a first down. Drives you crazy as a defense. Looks like you're exactly right. Looked like a for sure stop on third, and then the tables turn. territory now here's first and 10 at the 42 yard line throwing his hurts this will be caught by Brown they'll get it inside the 20 and all the way inside the 15 before they drop it that'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw toward the sideline, and that is a nice catch as he's able to tiptoe his way out of bounds. 12 more yards there and another first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomped down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Thank you. 
So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. It'll be Hurts on the option. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. Well, now hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Hurd's going to keep it again. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Considering they've seen him have some big gains against him throughout this game, that's got to feel like a measure of revenge as they trap him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Hurt sets up to throw it. Flush to his right. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Disrupting that play and dropping it was Arnold Evacati. And here's a rookie whose job isn't done, just dropping quarterbacks to the turf. Arnold Evacati locks in on the ball from the get-go and does everything possible to strip it away from the quarterback in the pocket. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. The kick by Elliott is good. And that would make this a 10-point game at 16-6. So that CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And here now come the Falcons. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Mariota on first down. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. They'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Throwing again on second down. Mariota. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. Mariota to throw it. Got a man. It's London. And they're going to get this up to midfield. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Mariota's throw there taken in by Hodge. 
And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. First down now, but that clock rolling. Trying the left side with Algier. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy is nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. Mariota yelling out the play call as he hustles everyone to get set. Now Mariota. That's caught inside the 20. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. A big pickup of 38. They're still looking for their first touchdown of the game. And for a second, I thought they had it right there. A look at on the sideline, it's finally good to see nods of approval. It's a welcome sign of life that this offense needed. First down now, but the clock continues to move to throw Mariota. And this is caught for a touchdown. So hang on now. Things just got a little bit more interesting here in the final minute. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. So with just under 40 seconds to go, you figure this is going to need to bounce their way if they have any shot. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. The risk-reward of the onside kick. When you don't get it, the risk comes out to play. And here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them. And field position leads you to that type of play calling. And whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, now that they've given up that type of field position, the advantage is switched to their opponent. Up the middle they go with Sanders. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. The Eagles in the victory formation as they take a knee. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Hurts down to one knee, and that should just about do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road. 
but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. This was what an atmosphere this was, and the home team getting the late touchdown, getting the victory, and now everybody in this building can file away with smiles on their faces. And what do real estate people tell us all the time? It's location, location, location. So being at home, that can be a big deal because remember, they were down to their final chance to retake the lead. That home field advantage, I think it helped fuel all what happened for them down the stretch. A huge win.